Welcome to this episode of Author Again. I'm Travis Davis, your host. Tell us your story. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Author Eke this week. Today, I have uh, David Darling, and if I'm not mistaken, he is north of the border up in the 51st state of Canada, somewhere in one of the provinces, which I've tell you, I've been to Canada many times. I did a lot of work there in uh, Vancouver, in uh, Calgary, in Toronto. I actually had, I was, a, I was flying back from Germany in 1979. We had a bomb threat on the airplane. And they get, they landed in Gander, Newfoundland. So I've been to a lot of the provinces. So uh, David, welcome uh, to the show and introduce yourself and we'll take it from there. Well, I, I'm Dave Darling. Uh, well, first of all, thank you very much for having me on. And uh, it's uh, after connecting on social media uh, and all the conversations, it's finally good to put a, a moving face to the, to the, the keyboard strokes there. So uh, thank you very much for having me. Yep. Thank um, you. A bit about me. Uh, I, I grew up in uh, in Ontario, uh, east of Toronto. So um, when I was about uh, 20, 21, uh, after college, I uh, had met enough guys in the Army Reserve. So uh, they, I cut that ponytail off. I shaved my head. And what? Then, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I had the old Jeff Healy look going pretty well there. So uh, uh Mostly I did it because nobody thought I would. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like the challenge. So, uh, uh, and lo and behold, um, boy, did I love the Army. Boy, was it good. I just. Me too. I, I couldn't do it any better. I was an armored crewman. So I started ah. off as a driver, uh, a gunner, and eventually crew commander. So I had that, what, uh, uh, the, what, what type of tank? Uh, we were in the Cougars. The, the Basically, they're like labs, uh, armored AVGPs, AVGPs, okay. Bisons, uh, the Cougars, Grizzlies. I was, I was a reconnaissance. I was a scout, so we were in the one one threes and the Bradley fighting vehicles and the Humvees and stuff. Yeah, I've also uh, I was in the armored uh, reconnaissance, armored recce, mm -hmm. um, and we had the the Altus, the Jeeps, and uh, that's you, you and your you feet drive and your so. feet. <laughs> <laughs> well, dismounted was a uh, it, it happened. Yeah, it's so. a thing. So I really enjoyed that. Um, uh, but I, what I really enjoyed with the Army was uh, two things. First, it, it taught me how to learn. I always had uh, problems learning in school, high school, and college. And um, until I was in the Army, I was about 26, and it really sunk in after being there four years. I, I knew how to learn. Um, and then with that came the ability to teach. So I started teaching. I, I was an instructor on from basic training, how to, how to walk, polish your boots, to march, to shoot a rifle. Uh, eventually, I moved into how to how to drive the, the tanks, how to drive uh, a Jeep, how to do, <laughs> you name it. I, I, taught, I taught the course, and um, after 17 years, uh, some of the best courses I taught were how to be the instructor. So, you know, I eventually became that guy to teach other young guys how to, how to be an instructor. Uh, mm -hmm. So I just loved it. So uh, that part I missed, the teaching. Uh, I think that was just incredible. So, um, However, I got uh, a lifetime of experience in 17 years. And, right. uh, I met a bunch of guys that I'm still friends with uh, to this day. And we, we, we always will be friends. So it's good. Uh, yeah. So we have similar backgrounds. I, mean, I, so... I, I did, I did <clears throat> research as well. So I did notice yeah. that. Although I, didn't, I wasn't in Germany. Um, however, mm -hmm. I know guys that were there. Mm -hmm. at the same time you were so um maybe after but i was i was an instructor at the armor school at fort knox okay. um so i helped uh teach the future cavalrymen uh you know back in the day yep. and uh I, I like you i i, I didn't i didn't like school i quit high school in the right. 11th grade actually about 47 years ago today as a matter <laughs> of fact wow. um and wow. the and then I was in the I was basic training on November the second, okay. so seventeen years old. So I, I I just didn't like the you know I guess I thought I knew everything, but evidently I didn't by what the drill sergeant told me the first time they saw me. Um, yeah. So I too I re never really started reading till I was in the army because you have to read to be able to pass the test or you know be able to excel or be able to do what you want. So I like I, I too started reading heavily and 
and uh, you know Tom Clancy and Robert Ludlum and uh, the world according to Garp. I mean, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. And then I became an instructor. Then when I got out of the army after 20 years, I, I, I've got some Microsoft certifications. So I said, oh, I'd, I'd like to be a you know, Microsoft trainer. So I luckily I got on the phone with Microsoft and the guy that I was talking to was a retired first sergeant of the army. And right. he said, Here, here's what you need to do. He said, send me your certificate for your uh, certification for Windows 95. I think it was at the time Great. or NT4. And send me your DD-214 where you were the hotel designator as an instructor. Yeah. So I did that. 20 minutes later, I got an email saying, welcome to the, being a Microsoft trainer. And that was lucrative at the time. Uh, yeah, but I can see, man, you have a ton of books there back of you. Yeah, I, I, I grew up watching TV. In fact, I don't know if just I, I was glued to the TV all the 70s until I hit about 14. And mm. then uh, I had an aunt and an uncle, and one Christmas they gave me uh, uh, the first three novels in this uh, fantasy series by uh, uh, Donald uh, uh, Tom, the Thomas Cov Covenant uh, series. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, so I, I read that, and then I was hooked. And then I I, I haven't gotten rid of a book since '84. Uh, so wow, uh, I got thousands of books all around me here. I got you know five six shelves. They're triple, quadruple stacked. And, my goodness. Uh, like on my Kindle, I got five, 600 novels. So uh, becoming an author, some people tell me it was it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, but it didn't quite happen the way I thought. So, but uh, yeah, I, I really enjoy reading all, 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 all genres. Uh, science fiction, mm -hmm. fantasy is what I started on. And then, uh, you know, uh, Tom Clancy. You're in the army and you're reading a Tom Clancy book like Hunt for Red October, and you're like, "I want to get out of the army and join the navy." <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm not quite quite ready to admit that yet. <laughs> you know, it's I'm in, approaching my mid fifties right now, and I'm still not going to admit it. But uh, <laughs> had I had a chance to do it all over again, yeah. I, I, maybe I would have gone navy. I, <laughs> boy, did they they still got the better food? That's for sure. Oh my goodness! Yeah, yeah, that, that's. <laughs> Oh, you know, Army child's pretty good. I gained a little weight in the Army and stuff and everything. So yeah. what? tell us about your books. Well, um, I guess I'll tell you first why I became an author and okay. why I started writing. And then yep. I'll, I'll get into the, because it leads into the what, what I first started writing. Uh, okay. I, was, I had sh shoulder surgery six years ago, and uh, I was reading like a book a day uh, while mm. I was recovering. So. I picked up a novel and it was, I don't want to say horrible, but it was so bad. I couldn't, I was like 150 pages into it. And I, I had to put it down. There's like no mm -hmm. way I'm going to read this. And I, I said, you know, I could write a better book than that. My God, it's garbage. My wife's like, well, you're not doing anything for months. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. I had literally months to kill three months. Yeah. So, uh, I, I, uh, I had grown up with a, a friend in Oshawa, uh, just east of Toronto there, and uh, Jonas, Jonas Sull, and he's a very uh, prolific uh, author now, and he yes. encouraged me. He goes, go for it. Yeah, and he goes, uh, so I sent him a few ideas, and he goes, run with it. Write the book first, and then we'll, we'll tackle it, and uh, I'll give you some pointers and tips, and uh, he did, and I finished my first novel, uh, The Yellow Book there. It's called uh, Serve in the Shadows Recruitment, and... Uh, uh, I had to write something about an army, so I wrote about a ranger in the 75th and uh -huh. uh, how his brother was a CIA operative and his brother died and, um, while uncovering a terrorist plot. However, uh, the main character could still see his brother, and mm -hmm. so he uh, takes leave uh, from his tour in Afghanistan and uh, goes off and... Uh, with his brother's ghost, so to speak, uh, he he uh, his brother dead brother's help he uh, foils the terrorist plot. Interesting, so, you know, that's it, a it, novel concept. Yeah, well, I've been reading. I was I was neck deep in uh, Brad Thor and Vince Flynn and mm -hmm. all that, and I go, <clears throat> I just don't have the experience. Despite the military background, I don't have their experience of writing. So I right. stuck with. Uh, uh, I tried to find something different. So that's mm -hmm. how I did that. Mm -hmm. and as soon as I finished that, um, I was reading a lot of uh, David Baldacci and mm -hmm. the Amos Decker series, uh, The Memory Man. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I, man, that police officer, yeah, I like that. But I, I wanted to keep it simple. I wanted to be like a small town police officer where 
things happen and he's there right guy at the wrong time so right right uh so i started the the, the noah hunter series the main character is noah hunter and mm-hmm. uh and i started with the tipping point and then um it's up there somewhere and uh oh there we go and then uh grave yep. choices is book two and uh book three is the course of action so and during that time i'm i, I still i'm working on book four right now it, i'm hoping uh It'll be out next summer. However, I got about seven projects I'm juggling. So, uh, oh, you got time. I got time. <laughs> speaking, of, speaking of time, I also got edge of time. Uh, during there you during, go. During the breaks, I, I needed a break from all the the police uh, thriller series. So mm-hmm. uh, I ended up writing a time travel science fiction book. Oh, well, interesting. And what do you like writing better? I like writing as long as right. I. If I'm interested in the story, I mm. to me, if it's fantasy uh, or, or anything, as long mm. as I'm involved in it I, I, and I really enjoy it and I can envision the entire project in my head and then, boom, uh, off I go. So right. um, I think it's great So in that regard. I'll jump around genres. So I also got a fantasy series on the go I'm doing. I'm on book two on a trilogy. I'm halfway through that. So, uh, mm. so Wow, that's, that's interesting. So, yeah. So, do you do you write like uh, all the writers? Do you write in a sterile environment, or do you have white noise, or what's your preferred time, or when do you write, or things like that? One year, I wrote three novels, and everybody's like, "How did you do that? How?" And wow. I'm like, uh, uh, "Well, you make time. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't really watch TV. I gave up video games. Sorry for everybody that I played World of Warcraft with. Uh, <laughs> you know." They're, they're, uh they're in remission they're good yes so you know i gave stuff like that so instead of waking up at uh zero or seven o'clock in the morning i wake up at five so and that gives me another hour and a half after my Mm -hmm. coffee let's get realistic i get a couple of those down range first and then Mm -hmm. uh, it gives me another hour and a half before i go to work or when i come home from work uh, instead of plopping on the tv and vegging on the couch i open up the laptop sit in my comfy chair in the living room and then i just start typing so or maybe 30 40 minutes before bed um i, I finish a, a, a chapter or whatever right. so i try and hold to about 2000 words a day uh and i do that about 7 7 days a week so well that adds up quick i mean i wrote uh i wrote flames of deception my first book in 6 weeks because right. i could envision the whole thing right like i, I knew where i wanted to go and then the other one, uh, Cobalt, took me a little longer because I was marketing the other book. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of folks say, I'm going to write a book and it's going to take off and everybody's going to love it. And that's not the case, folks. Uh, <laughs> you write a book and then you market the heck out of the book forever or at least three years or longer. And so it took a little longer. Now I'm writing my third one, which is taking a little longer because I keep on revising the beginning. I got to get the beginning right yep. to set up. but. I started like five times, but now I'm like, oh, I can use this stuff from this, right? So now I can put it all together Perfect. and hopefully have it out by, well, be finished by the end of December into January and have it released in August, September timeframe next next year. Excellent. Yeah. Um, I, I I went the route. I do have a, a literary agent, uh, and I tried going the route of traditional publishing. I'm mm-hmm. not giving up on that, by the way. I still got uh, other unpublished novels right. that my agent is pitching, but... Uh, at a certain point, you just sit back and you go, how many of these other novels can I just have sitting on a digital shelf doing absolutely nothing with? So I ended up learning how to be my own marketing manager, my own advertising manager. I, I, I hired out the cover design. Mm-hmm. So you, you self-publish. Correct. Yeah. Um, and I've I've had some of the best literary agents uh, and editors at publishing houses in North America, read my work and go, I like it. I love the story. I love your writing. I, I It's just not the time. Or when uh, the police novels were coming out, the tipping mm. point, uh, the, the public's perception of the police at the time was at, at its lowest. And, right. the, and the agent told me, he, and, and the, through the, to the publisher, he's like, uh, now is not the time to start putting those novels out unless they've already been out and you're continuing a series. Uh, it, I just can't sell it. Not right now. Mm-hmm. So, and I'm like, well, do I wait another five years? No. Time to, I put it behind me, I move on, and then I, I go to the next project. So, uh, but um, with that, I'm, I'm like a medium fish in the, in the small self-publishing pond. I'm doing mm-hmm. 
I'm doing quite well. I'm not, uh, I'm not retiring from my job yet, but, uh, right. uh, but it's, it's definitely allowing me to retire early. I'm not waiting to 65. So I'm looking at another seven years and, uh, mm-hmm. at 60 and I'll, um, I'm just going to, I'm just going to write more. <laughs> right. So. Yeah. I enjoy the, I enjoy the writing. I enjoy the storytelling aspect cool. of it. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to dip my toes in a children's book too, actually. I've got I've got the whole concept, but I need to look at a children's book to see how to write it because I'm used to writing adult thrillers, you know. And I, I know. Oh, oh, oh crap! I put an f bomb in a kid's book. You know, I gotta. <laughs> I, I I just did that with my fantasy series. I go. It it was it was on the edge of a young adult adult, and I ended up making the decision. Let's go young adult. So I went through. Um, Took out the the graphic uh, disemboweling scenes, yeah. uh, you know the, the the heavy graphic stuff like that. Mm. And then I did the f bombs. <laughs> search, <Yeah. laughs> they're gone, and uh, I even took out Dan. Thank God for search. Yeah, search well, and replace. <laughs> you imagine not doing it. So uh, yeah, so I've got my uh, my wife's friend's daughter uh, reading it. And a couple of years when my my daughter's only ten, so uh, right. she'll be, uh, jumping in. So mm-hmm. hopefully. Uh, this little series will take off and I hope to do that one next year. Anyway, book one is mm-hmm. ready. I'm halfway through book two. Do you, do you use the same editor on all your books or do you have different editors that you use depending yes, upon the I genre? The same, yes. I have the same editor. And okay. I found it a uh, consistency is priceless. Mm-hmm. They, they know how I write. They know how I think. Mm-hmm. And if I turned around and, kept jumping around to different editors which i've done (laughs) trust me right i've run the gauntlet of i've spent thousands and thousands testing out the waters uh from seasoned editors to uh uh, second year university students uh, majoring in english Mm -hmm. uh, until i landed on where where i'm using so um excellent Uh, so what where what is predominantly your market is are you uh is it north america are there, is it any kind of other languages or are you strictly strict with, you know, English and the formats and stuff? Well, the, the, the bonus side of being my own advertising and marketing manager is I run my uh, advertisements and ads consistently. Um, what do you find that works? I've had little to zero success with Twitter, Amazon ads. I want to make work. I've studied. I haven't years. figured that out yet. <laughs> I've studied for years on how to make that work. Um, if somebody could, I need somebody to sit with me and walk me through it mm-hmm. properly because everything I've run, I've, I've, uh, it's been, a, it's been a monetary loss. Uh, yep. So right now my predominant is, uh, my own social media posts and mm-hmm. Facebook ads. Um, and that's doing it. Uh, I, I used to have a, like ten percent of my sales used to be Australia, mm-hmm. um, uh, England, Germany, and um, uh, well, the UK in in Germany uh, as well as Canada and the United States. Yep. So recently, since uh, August this year, I've dropped everywhere else, and I'm only advertising in Canada and the United States, and my sales jumped. So all my yeah, dollars- that see, and the reason I ask you that because I think it's important for authors to know the demographics of the readers. Right. Because you're going to, you're, you know, the ads aren't cheap and people haven't realized after 25, 30 years of the internet, that if you click on something, it's going to cost somebody something, even if you don't care yes. what that you clicked on it, right. Just by clicking on it is going to cost you a dollar or $2 depends really. Right. So I oh, think it's critical that you understand your market, your audience, when to market, there's times of days, there's, Time frames. There's all the sorts of things that you can you can get from sure. just that. But I, I agree with the Twitter ads. No, not really. I just yep. mess around on Twitter, anyways. Um, Facebook. I, I I put out there. I, I wanted to more to push them to my page, right, right. for Team Text Arcana, and that worked. Okay. Um, but Amazon. I mean, I'm like, you know, here's my budget of you know hundred, two hundred dollars, and I'm like. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you know I'm doing everything you tell me to do, but it's not working. So there's something else at work there. I've heard people only advertise with Amazon, and they're very successful, and they've made a killing. I mm-hmm. and I followed the exact same instructions. Mm-hmm. I can't do it. So I, yeah, I mean keywords. I mean I, I use yeah. a, a pocket pocket uh, 
what is it? Rocket something. And, you know, for keywords, looking at what's, you know, I change my keywords every, you know, 90 days or because yeah. I think that's key too, but like, so holy done, smokes. Yeah. 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 Well, for, for, for example, face, well, for, the, for anybody listening that this might interest. Hmm. So I've focused everything I have for advertising with Facebook. I threw it all, all my eggs into it. I know <laughs> I don't, if it wasn't for being an author and advertising, I probably wouldn't be on Facebook, except mm -hmm. I really like the point of staying in contact with some friends that I haven't seen in 40 years, right. some family. So, uh, but so, so for the advertising, it's all, it's all based on demographics. So I've over the last few years, I found out my demographics are not below 35 years of age. It's primarily mm -hmm. women, 35 year, years of age and up. Uh, English speaking, and you, if you input the keywords right within Amazon, it narrows down the uh, target audience right. better. So I, right. I'll include like such key phrases. For example, uh, uh, Edge of Time. So the time travel novel, I'll include like FBI, uh, time travel. I'll mm -hmm. include, you name it. I just go through the list of everything pertinent in my novel. And uh, here's the key phrase everybody loves: Ryan Reynolds. My gosh, our Canadian treasure! So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I included the words Ryan Reynolds uh, in all my posts because it'll connect at least with more people. And plus, that's he was, interesting. Uh, he was in the uh, the Adam Project. It was a movie about time travel, so yeah. it is somewhat relevant. Right. So, um, and then you put your comparable titles in there too, and that's just narrowing down the search. And, yeah. And it, what I've done is uh, I do like book signings at uh, you know, Kroger and libraries and all sorts all over. Right. But I keep track of the demographics who's buying the books and I ask them. Right. And uh, a lot of women buy the books and they buy it either for, for their husbands. Yeah. So and then I, you know, normally it's, it's curb appeal. Right. It's curb appeal of the book cover. That, that, yeah. that's, you know, that's how you get them in there. Then you start talking. And then I always have to tell people they're fiction. <laughs> they're like, Are, is this real? I go, no, it's fiction. It, but yeah. then you want, okay, you want fiction to be real to, oh, for sure, yeah. to a certain point, right? Or it just becomes abstract. Um, but yeah, so I, I do try to maintain the demographics, uh, look at maybe some targeting for the holiday season. Cause that's coming up. That's a big, uh, yeah. you know, when, when you, you know, when, when are the book buying seasons, when, and it looks like a lot of times August, September is a lot of people put out books. September, October, September, August, September, October, a lot of books coming out. Yeah. Or put it around a thriller fest or do something around an event where you can market it and get people to market it. And then it's key to reviews, right? Those, those drive a lot of things. People, you know, just put a star, write a, write a sentence, do something when you write, re, when you read the book. Well, it really September, I can't remember the date now. Um, September 8th or 10th or whatever it was, there was something called a stuff your Kindle event. That's primarily for romance authors uh, to get their work out. And they put it for free on Kindle for a couple days, two or mm -hmm. three or four days. And I was thinking, well, okay, I, this wasn't my idea. This is my wife's <laughs> idea. She, she, that's the kind of the novel she reads. She right. goes, oh, all these authors are making uh, one of their books free for the stuff your Kindle event. And I'm like, I'm going to do that. So I made the tipping point free ebook for downloads on, uh, on the stuff your Kindle. And I promoted mm -hmm. it. I ran a couple, you know, I spent 10, 20 bucks on ads for mm -hmm. uh, uh, Facebook and uh, book talk. I got it looped into the book talk and uh, through TikTok. Sorry. Mm -hmm. for those you don't know. Uh, and uh, it blew up. I day one, I had 900 copies downloaded. So I'm like, Wow, that's that's not too bad. Mm -hmm. That's but, good. But book two was not free, and book three is not free. But you, but the book one, it, yes, hook, line, and sinker. So <laughs> I, I set that hook rather well, and they're uh, see that's what a scout does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I brought him in. I brought you brought him, him in. So uh, yeah, so so it's just blowing up now there's um for halloween day there's uh, uh, a sort of another horror shop type mm -hmm. uh novels are being free all the horror novels and i got a, a 
novella, Grim Measures. It's a psychological thriller about a kidnapping and the guy who works with the FBI to get his daughter back. There. Mm -hmm. And the things he has to do. In the, so it's more of a psychological thriller. However, uh, I'm advertising that already and I'm making that free. So, but because I'm my own business manager uh, mm -hmm. for the ebook, I included the first five chapters for Edge of Time as well. So now people finish that and they're going, oh, it's 30,000 word novella. Oh, what's this extra 6,000 words on the end? Oh, they're going to read it and start doing that. So again, setting the hook. So that's that's a good on. idea. That's a great idea. Um, from, you know, giving something away, especially if you have multiple books where they can say either, here's the newest one. Now you want to go read the first one because you want to figure out how the team was created or how yeah. they even get to where they're at and, and, and all yeah. that. Or via v where you don't have to read in sequence you can read them independently but they're all created to the same team or to that extent for sure yeah well yeah. it's like i said i'm my own business manager uh and you're right it does it this eats into my writing time but mm -hmm. you know every day i gotta do something i gotta check how is this ad doing there uh, how can i make this ad better wow look at my sales today what did i do that day oh that's right i posted on twitter and facebook and let's keep this going now do you do when you run your ads on facebook do you use a trailer like a movie well, trailer I, I use um a simple um uh, picture white background with my novel on it and one sentence just to hook the reader so interesting and, and, and people look at that and the other and they'll, they'll do it however we just said, you know, we got to let uh, uh, the cover speak for itself. So sometimes, you know, yeah, like that's doing it. Yeah, uh, the, my my designer just blew me out of the water with that design. So uh, and that's bringing people in. Uh, it's six months since uh, Edge of Time was released, and I'm mm. still uh, on the Kindle store for science fiction, uh, time travel. I'm, I'm within, I'm, I'm still around the best sellers around the 50th. Oh, oh, wow. That's, that's excellent. It's blowing my mind away. So, but, but the cover and all these efforts contribute towards it. So, uh, so you brought up another good thing is where, where do you put your book in the categories on Amazon means yeah. a ton of, from a ranking perspective where, you put it like mine's a military thriller. You need to sell like 250 a day to be number one or something. Right. right. So where do you put it? And I think they've cut down how many actually you can put it in now. Category, yeah. subcategories. Yeah. You can only put it in two uh, independent yeah. authors. Uh, anybody using KDP can only uh, put it in two. Um, your keywords that you place, your seven mm -hmm. keywords um, will give you a, a third category at times, depending on your first keyword. So right. for, for example, mine is time travel, um, science fiction, time travel, uh, alternate history and time travel fiction. Mm -hmm. uh, I, some people will, I don't want to say abuse their, you know, uh, the categories to get their novel to number one, then they'll switch it back. Now they can say, yes, it was number one. Um, you know, it's in cozy mysteries when screenshot, it, screenshot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Catch it quick, though. You got to be quick. You gotta, yes, yeah. You you snap it up quick. That, you number one bestseller, and then you you switch your categories back to where they should be. So yeah, yeah I, they're games. I talked to an author uh, a couple months ago, and he what he told me he said every day he spends an hour in marketing. You know, set aside that time. Because that's going to reap the benefits, you know, going mm -hmm. forward. And then I, every iteration that you do, you learn something. Yes. And, how, you know, then your next novel or, or was it your first or second, whoever, right? You can go ahead and add that and you can build yourself a mental algorithm of what you need to be able to do or a cadence. Then I think another thing that I didn't know uh, that you got to properly launch a book, right? <laughs> For sure. There's a, there, there you got to market it beforehand. You've got to get them folks interested, especially for when I first released my first novel. Uh, I didn't know how to do it. And uh, honestly, I don't, I don't, well, I don't want to say anything right now, but uh, that's key. So my second, I did a little better. My third, I'm going to do much better because I understand 
what it is. And, and I've got both of my books uh, that you can get the first two or chapters or three chapters on an ebook and free, right? Yeah. Then it links them back uh, to the book itself. But that, those, just those little things that you that you didn't know at first. Oh, there's, the behind the scenes work is incredible. So yep. just getting the author proofs, the author copies, reading it yourself, uh, you know, the tipping point. I The first novel in the series, I've read that so many times. I It makes me sick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Read, like what? It must be about 20, 22 times I've read that entire novel, checking every word. Everybody, my beta readers have checked every word. My editor, uh, you name it, everything's checked. And as soon as you push publish, uh, <laughs> a mistake. You find or... something. Oh, <laughs> oh, I know. I, I, I've, I've come under that uh, same scenario. It's aggravating. It's well. It's also least. happened to some of the best authors in the world. So yes, I'll, I'll take that with a grain of salt. Yeah, it, it does. I mean, it's it's human nature. It just happens. I think. I think. I don't know. So, what do you do in your spare time? Uh, well, if you have any, well, don't say marketing. Uh, well, <laughs> all these are essential. Uh, spare time. Uh, I like to fish. I used to like to golf until the aforementioned uh, uh, shoulder surgery. Mm-hmm. Hanging out, <laughs> doing stuff low, low key. Uh, not too much going on lately, anyway. But we're just after right after a couple of years of COVID, we're housebound. So now we're. Taking out with friends and uh, having a few, Excellent. Uh, few beverages. <laughs> well, it is. Uh, it does get cold up there. Uh, I oh, remember. We're still uh, wearing shorts. So <laughs> yes, yesterday it. Was, oh yeah, that's right. Let me try and. Uh, it was a. It was about seventy here yesterday Fahrenheit. Mm-hmm. Sixty-eight, seventy. So oh, that's nice. Yeah, today's a little colder, so it would be about uh, forty-six. <laughs> So, yes, yeah, it's, it's. I live in Dallas. It was ninety-one yesterday, and Wednesday is going to be thirty-two. Oh my gosh! For the okay. cold, for the for the low, it's going to be like fifty. But I remember, I think the first or second time I went to, I did some work for CBIC. Is that the bank? Yep. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I did, yep. I did some work for them, and the first time I went to Toronto, I think, was in two thousand and two or th- whatever SARS. <laughs> so I get on the airplane, right? And I'm going to uh, Toronto. And during the airplane, they give this piece of paper. Like, I, I go, what? <laughs> SARS? <laughs> like, eh. That's right. But yes, but I loved it. I, Toronto was a clean New York. <laughs> That's why I look at it. And it has one of the, uh, like the start of the longest street in the world. Yong Street. Continuous. Street, yeah, it's. I think 20, 22 hours and you're still on the yep. same street driving north to south. Yep. So, yeah. Yep. I, I've never done that drive. We've, me and my friends have talked about it many times. Oh, wow. That would be a drive. Yeah. Where do you end up at? Thunder Bay or somewhere? Thunder Bay's 18 hours, so it's well north of that. Oh, wow. So, yeah. That's, and we're all in the same province. We haven't left the province of Ontario yet, so that you, you're way up there. Oh, wow. You were way up there. I was in Calgary at one time. I, I think I saw four seasons at one week. <laughs> All Snow. by that, yeah. yeah, in May. The <laughs> Chinook winds came through. Oh, it was snowing and hot, but it's beautiful, beautiful. So so where can everybody reach out to you? Where can everybody find your books and, and uh, just kind of contact, connect with you? Well, I, I'm fairly uh, conversant and uh, online with Twitter all the time. Uh, David Darling, uh, CA. Is, uh, my, is my Twitter handle, but you mm-hmm. can get a hold of me. Uh, DavidDarlingBooks.com is my website, and through there you can get all these social media links. Uh, right, and we'll and I'll uh, you send me a message if you have questions or you want to know more about the books. Yeah, send me a message, and we'll. Uh, and I'll you're on TikTok. I I'm not sure I agree with TikTok, <laughs> but it's selling books. Instagram quite, quite well. Facebook. It's, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Uh, I, I'm, I have Threads, the new Instagram, uh, but I have, I'm not really on it. Much. I haven't. You know, I signed up and I'm like, uh, yeah. I don't know. I mean, there's so many things, and I'm like, uh And then you know, there's True. a lot of people out there that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, if anybody has any questions, I'm. I, so many people have helped me over the years uh, through self-publishing and. Uh, mm-hmm. 
even writing query letters and whatnot. If anybody has any problems, questions, or uh, wants to know more about something, by all means, please reach out, let me know, and uh, I'll, I'll help. I'll give you a hand if I can. If not, That's I'll what I found help. out, that we're not in competition, right? We're well, in a very a symbiotic uh, industry that people help people. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's why, you know, that's why I had this, one of the reasons I have the podcast, A, I didn't know what I was doing, so I might as well talk to people to do. Um, and, but I found out just through, you know, talking to folks and authors, you know, big, small, new, old, established, whatever, that everybody just wants to help each other. And that, 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 that you yeah. find that, that's not often in today's world that you find, and people from different backgrounds and, you know, whatever, right? Demographics, whatever, it doesn't matter. But that's, that's kind of interesting about the literary world. Yeah, the more books I help you sell or get you better, it's not going to hurt me at all. It does exactly. the opposite. So I, I don't mind doing all of that. That's, yeah. It's great. Yeah, I'm, I'm 100% agreement. Well, David, I know it's Saturday and I know you got some writing to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, I might I might have a wee nap first. It is the weekend. Oh, well, yeah, you know, take your time. Yeah. You got two I days. Gotta clean out the dryer vent and I got to change the air filter for the win- winter's coming. So I know. Garden hose oh. is already away. I know. Well, it was a pleasure meeting you. And again, folks, go check him out. Uh, Look at his books. uh, Get his books. But, and put a rating. Give him a review. Well, if we we got two seconds. Yes, go ahead. I happen to have an extra copy of Edge of Time, my latest science fiction time travel novel. If you got this far in the interview, send me a message and reference Travis, his name, and what show we're on and i'll put you in a draw and by the end of november i'll send this out to a lucky uh lucky contestant so i don't need to read that novel again so uh hopefully somebody somebody else will enjoy it so no i'm going back in time again oh no (laughs) uh, groundhog day yeah interesting great well david it's been a pleasure meeting you and uh thanks for your service to your country and uh, you as well. Uh, I'm glad to see uh, a similar brother uh, down yeah. south. Yep. Uh, pretty, yeah. We, I, I remember I went out with the British uh, Royal Dragoons just training in Germany with them. They're reconnaissance yep. unit. I no, drank with yeah, them once, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it was, <laughs> it was a rough day the next day. It was tough. <laughs> and the yeah, scorpions out and stuff. It was rough. Yeah, I'll tell you that. So, Excellent. Yeah. Well, David, you take it easy, and thank you very much, folks. Go out there, check him out, and please subscribe to Author Eke. Thank you. Talk to you later, David. Take Bye-bye. care. Thank you for listening to Author Eke. There'll be another episode next week. Please stop by and start your own story. We can't wait to hear it.